Hi, this is Stephen from Owner Disown, and today we are taking a look at the Gigabyte P57X V7. It is a 17 inch gaming laptop that is available in two flavors. The 1080p 60Hz IPS model goes for $1,800, and the QHD 120Hz TN model for $2,000. Both are actually very competitive in this space, generally undercutting the competition by $100 or $200. Now, Gigabyte doesn't make any sacrifices in quality either. Much like their Aero 15, it is actually made of plastic, and although it is available in, in black only, it looks clean and well presented. I like the, uh, the orange accents here you have on the sides, and uh, also on the sides of the hinges here. Now, I think it looks perfect for a business user or a student. Now, the screen does have uh, a little bit of uh, flex, so does the keyboard, but to be honest, nothing to worry about. The one I am reviewing is the QHD version. It is a TN, and interestingly, it uses the same panel as the QHD Alienware R4 by AUO. Now, it does not have G-Sync, and it uses uh, Optimus technology to automatically switch to the Intel graphics on light workloads. It has mineral backlight bleed too, which I think is great, and the color reproduction is exactly the same, and the brightness nearly spot on to the Alienware. The colors look good with 92% uh, of uh, sRGB and 70% of uh, Adobe RGB, and its high brightness means that lateral viewing angles are actually quite good. Most of the color shift takes place when you actually tilt it backwards, which, to be fair, is the same as all TN panels. Even outdoors, the screen is, uh, is visible, and the beauty about having a bright display is that you can lower the brightness and still have visible content on your display. Now, it's not G-Sync, um, but its knockout feature at this price point is a QHD resolution with a fast 5 millisecond response time and a lightning fast 120Hz refresh rate. Perfect for gaming. Now, since there is no uh, G-Sync, you'll have to use V-Sync. And here I demonstrate that 120Hz is much smoother than 60Hz, even using V-Sync. Even in the Windows environment, Moving a, a window around is noticeably smoother at 20, 120 hertz. Now, the back of the display shows the Gigabyte logo, and unlike the Aero 15, it does not light up. It uh, is a reflective silver, um, so very much uh, similar to the uh, Aorus line. Now, it is a fingerprint magnet, so make sure you keep a wiping cloth handy. Like many of the laptops in this price range, it is equipped with a quad-core i7-7700 HQ CPU and 16 gigs of DDR for 2400 megahertz RAM. Now there are two slots, so you can actually up it to 32 gigabytes. It has a 76 watt hour battery, which is good for 323 minutes of use at 25% brightness on power saver. This is just over five and a half hours. And, and although this is less than the seven hours on the non G Sync 1080 80p Alienware 17R4, it is much better than uh, G Sync models like the ASUS G752 VI. Gaming, you know, expect uh, just under an hour. I think this is great, though, as it is one of the most portable 17-inch gaming laptops out there. As you can see, its uh, footprint is uh, much smaller than the MSI GT73 VR. At 27 millimeters, or just over an inch thick, and only 6.1 pounds, or two and three quarter kilos, with no drive caddy, it is very mobile. Even with a power supply, it weighs even less than the Alienware 17R4. I mentioned the drive caddy, and this is quite a unique uh, setup. Acer have something similar with a removable uh, bay with a fan in it, but Gigabyte definitely increased the flexibility here by having a DVD drive that can be replaced with a hard drive or an SSD on the fly. Looking at its internals, you can see when the uh, caddy goes, where the caddy goes, and the SATA interface it plugs uh, into. There's a switch underneath that to use to release it. Now, the biggest drawback is that the DVD drive can be opened up when it's on your lap, especially if you have a bit of a belly like me here. Could this space be used differently? Sure, um, perhaps a spare battery or, or another M.2 slot, but it is good to have options. So kudos to Gigabyte for, for mixing things up. I mentioned the power supply. It is a 200 watt versus the regular 230 watts from its competitors. Now, during normal gaming, it was fine. I noticed uh, no drop in performance. At full load with Prime 95 and a game running in the, in the background, it did uh, top 213 watts. So in, in those situations, you may see some power throttling or battery usage. At idle, I did notice that the, the battery would stop charging to safeguard uh, battery life, which is a good thing. For storage, it has uh, one, one terabyte drive and one M.2 slot that accepts both SATA and PCI Express SSDs. 
My SSD is a 512GB SATA made by Transend. It has read speeds of 535 megabytes per second and write speeds of 315. Of course, you can add up to two terabytes hard drive in that caddy. At the top, we have a webcam. This is what it looks and sounds like. So here's the webcam, 720p webcam, a color chart up here, and it uh, looks a little bit grainy, but it's clear enough, and this is what it sounds like. Let's take a look at its ports. On the left hand side, we have an ethernet jack, two USB 3 ports, SD card reader, and separate headphone and microphone jacks. On the right hand side, we have a third USB 3 port, a USB 3.1 Type-C, HDMI 2.0, a mini display port, a VGA port, and a power jack. Now, it's interesting that they have that VGA port, and as a business traveler, I actually like that it's still there. Because many, you know, many VGA monitors are out there, as well as projectors. The two 2-watt uh, two speakers are at the front and fire through two front-facing grills. Now, there is no subwoofer, and although they are not that loud at 75 decibels, there is a good stereo effect. <laughs> Software-wise, you have uh, Dolby Digital Plus to tinker with the sound, whether it be movies, music, gaming, or voice. You can also create two custom profiles, creating your own equalizer settings, enabling virtual surround and enhancing uh, dialogue or leveling the volume. The speakers are loud enough to hear over any fan noise, but not so much uh, to watch a DVD, say, with the family. But then again, you can always uh, hook it up to a TV with the uh, HDMI cable. Now, Gigabyte has always been great with their fan profiles. For those seeking uh, a silent uh, machine when at idle, the quiet profile is great. The fans only start spinning up when the CPU hits 25% uh, 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 CPU usage. And at load, it uh, goes up to 1600 RPM, but it's still very quiet. Normal fan when under load ramps up to 3823 RPM, producing 42 decibels of noise, and this is still very manageable. Now, the gaming fan ups the, uh, the load fan speed up to 4286 RPM and 47 decibels of noise. And finally, the custom fan lets you uh, choose either a percentage of the max fan or just have it at max, which is 4,890 RPM and 51 decibels. Now, this is louder than the Alienware 17R4, but much less than some of the more beefy laptops like the MSI GT73 VR. Do they do a good job of moving hot air out and keeping the parts of the chassis in contact with your skin cool? Most importantly, the AWSD keys are cool at 29 degrees Celsius. The keyboard gets hot towards the, uh, the key air area at about 46 degrees, and the number pad gets uh, warm at 42 degrees. Fortunately, you don't usually rest your hands uh, here, so uh, that's perfectly fine. Naturally, towards the back where the, the heat pipes are, you get a toasty 49 degrees. When you're on, when on your lap, the area which uh, touches your legs are fine at 32 degrees, and at the back, it is 47. So the main contact areas are cool, which I think is great. You have AMCAP software, which captures footage from your webcam, and it just saves it to the hard drive. Now, I guess this is useful if you want to uh, watch your facial expressions uh, as you're gaming. The first thing uh, you want to do is uh, open up the Smart Update and update all of your software. Note that the Smart Manager software needs to be updated to version 6.7.9, so as to stop that pesky empty Project 11 executable file running in the background, which halves your battery life. Unfortunately, neither Smart Update or the support page has its latest version, so I include a link in the description below, and I can't emphasize enough uh, that you need to do this update. Now, the next main piece of software is Smart Manager. Here, you can alter the volume, screen brightness, power mode, turn Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on and off, control the key backlight, choose a monitor profile, you can control the mouse speed, and also look at the dashboard. Now, the dashboard provides useful information such as GPU, CPU, and disk usage. It tells you how much battery you have left, your power scheme, fan speed, and temperature of your CPU and GPU. You have your fan profiles, which we talked about, and uh, finally, you have your graphics overclocking utility. This allows you to overclock with five presets. I recorded what each preset does uh, to the frequency of the GPU core and uh, the memory. At max overclock, you get a modest 5% improvement. Now, usually I am able to overclock by about 10%, and indeed, 
I was able to squeeze out 9% using MSI Afterburner. The trackpad is made of uh, plastic, it's smooth with decent tracking and separate uh, deep travel mouse buttons. Now pinch to zoom is poor but scrolling is okay. To alter the key brightness you press the FN key and the spacebar and it has three different light levels. The keys have nice travel and feedback. The keyboard is an anti-ghosting keyboard with 30 key rollover and indeed all keys are registered unlike the Aero 15. So let's take a look at the temperatures of the CPU and GPU during my test. As you can see the CPU and GPU share the same heat pipes. They do this to help cool the GPU which consumes more power. The good news um, with this decision is that for CPU only tasks like video encoding and photo work your CPU runs nice and cool. Even with just a normal fan the CPU averages just 72 degrees Celsius. Now fire up a game however we do see a different result entirely. Using the normal fan profile we average 91 degrees Celsius. The gaming fan brought this down to 88 and the max fan down to 83 degrees. I was able to apply a 109 millivolt uh, undervolt uh, to the CPU which brought a 3 to 5 degree reduction and as you can see undervolting reduces the CPU power draw by about 5 watts. It's definitely worth doing this even just to get better battery life. I recommend using either the gaming fan profile with an undervolt or sticking with the max fan if, uh, if the extra noise doesn't bother you. The GPU temperatures uh, fared fairly well under the normal fan at 81 degrees. Using the gaming fan, 75 degrees, so that's a good 6 degrees uh, change there, and a further 5 degrees using the, the max fan. Um, the GPU consumed on average about 113 watts, and under undervolting the CPU didn't really affect the temperature of the GPU. I tested the laptop uh, playing Tomb Raider outside. Uh, where the ambient temperature was a toasty 29 degrees Celsius. I had the 109 millivolt uh, undervolt applied and the max fan in place and after an hour the CPU reached 85 degrees and the GPU 76. I think that is a great performance. Okay with that out of the way let's take a look at the performance. I compare it against uh, other GTX 1070 laptops. To start the CPU tests we have Cinebench R15 multi-threaded test. The P57X performs where it should do. With an i7-700HQ you can see the benefit that overclocking can do on the ASUS G752VS at the bottom there. I use Handbrake to convert a 4GB to 1080p video file to MP4 and measure the time taken. It performs right on par with the smaller Aero 15 with the same CPU but naturally cannot match an overclocked i7-7820HK. I use Adobe Lightroom to convert 50 photos to a slideshow. It actually performs slightly slower than the Aero 15 but since the settings weren't exactly the same I didn't, uh, I didn't include it. Instead I show what a faster CPU can, uh, can do. If you do a lot of video or photo manipulation I really recommend getting an overclockable HK series CPU. The P57X will uh, get the job done but it's designed to be a good all round laptop with good gaming performance in a very lightweight package. So how does it perform in games? What I was most impressed with was how consistent the, the frame rates were for each test. So with Time Spy we scored 5257 points which to be fair is on par with the stock clocked ASUS G752VS but lags behind the Alienware 17R4 uh, but it's still a good solid score. I uh, test some games at 1080p and at native QHD resolution. In Doom 1080p we see a very good performance compared to the 15 inch MSI GT62 VR at 91 FPS. Switching to QHD we still see a very good 76 FPS. Fantastic. Battlefield 1 1080p ultra settings we again beat the MSI GT62 VR but can't match the ASUS G752 VS with that overclockable CPU. Upping this to QHD we see a similar result in, in performance to the Alienware 17R4. I used level 5 overclock profile in this to, to, to test and we saw about 4-5% gain. Ghost Recon Wildlands is a tough game at ultra settings even at 1080p. Interestingly it even beat up my MSI GT73 VR with a GTX 1080 with that CPU not overclocked. Even at QHD it still managed at uh, 38 FPS. The much more powerful and expensive Sager NP98 Zen 3 only beating it by 20%. Rainbow Six Siege at max settings 1080p the P57X leads the way beating both the MSI GT62 VR and the ASUS G752VS with 78 FPS. At QHD 
we see 50 FPS. Remember, this is at max settings, a mighty fine performance. Finally, the Witcher 3 at 1080p, we get 66 FPS at max settings. Slightly behind the rest, but you know, nothing drastic. And at QHD, we get about 50 FPS, which is only 17% and behind the stock clocked Alienware 17R4 with a GTX 1080. Not bad at all. So let's sum up then. If you're looking for a 17 inch gaming laptop that is lightweight and versatile, I don't think you need to look much further than the Gigabyte P57 XV7. Whether you go for the IPS 60 hertz panel or the QHD 120 hertz panel like this one, you can't go too far wrong. I love the uh, 120 hertz refresh rate on this. Fantastic for, for gaming. And uh, I also like the fact that uh, you've got that DVD drive that's removable, uh, put a hard drive in, increase storage, or save weight. And talking about weight, it uh, weighs similar to many 15 inch laptops out there with a 17 inch screen. So for portability, that is absolutely fantastic. So all in all, I give it a, a score of 83%. Thumbs up for me. And uh, if you like my video, please uh, thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye.